The Apollo 11 mission to the moon has been one of the most significant events of the last century, if not the entirety of human history. It was the first time a human being had set foot on another planetary body, and it ended the so-called space race with Russia. It was an awe-inspiring sight to everyone who watched as Buzz Aldrin and Neil Armstrong set foot on the moon. But what were the larger cultural and social aspects of this momentous trip? Perhaps one of the more noticeable impacts of the moon landing was its effect on popular culture. Fashion designers created avant-garde collections inspired by thoughts of the future. Space-age fabrics like metallic materials became increasingly prevalent and were further popularized by pop stars such as David Bowie, who created his Ziggy Stardust alter ego. Many musicians were prompted to develop space-themed music. Pink Floyd even created the music BBC viewers saw as they watched the moon landing. Artists experienced a perspective shift and began producing artwork inspired by the images of Earth from space, the moon's surface, and the possibility of intergalactic travel. The genre of science fiction also advanced through the success of the Apollo 11 mission. Star Trek, which debuted in 1966, benefited from the live broadcast of the moon mission, and films like Star Wars captured the imagination of the first generation born and raised in the space age. Space travel was no longer pure fiction, and this believability boosted the popularity of films, TV shows, and cartoons about space, aliens, and what was seen as the cosmic future. A more quantifiable impact was that it boosted the American economy and, to a lesser extent, the global economy. Some econometric studies have estimated that the Apollo mission brought in $5 to $7 to the U.S. economy for every dollar spent on the project. Given that the U.S. government invested around $25.4 billion in the project, this theorized economic benefit was pretty substantial. Most proponents of the project cite the boost to the engineering, scientific, technological, and manufacturing sectors. However, some economists feel that there is not enough evidence to support the suggestion of growth on this scale. Nevertheless, as the Apollo program employed 400,000 people and was supported by over 20,000 industrial and private firms, the fact that it had a positive impact on the U.S. economy was undeniable. Companies like Gillette, who made the razors that the Apollo astronauts used to shave in space, benefited from their links to the world-renowned mission. The moon missions created jobs, sparked innovation, and prompted a technological revolution that affected numerous industries worldwide. One sector that was significantly influenced by the moon landing was the field of planetary science. Before the moon landing, the study of celestial bodies could only be conducted through observation. The lunar landing enabled scientists to look at the physical makeup of our planetary satellite. Scientists were able to make geologic observations, collect rock samples, and study the impact-generated layer of debris that covers the moon's surface. During the first lunar mission, around 22 kilograms of samples were collected. When Armstrong packed the samples, he used the dusty top layer of rock on the moon to pack in the rocks. This regolith, known as Armstrong's packing soil, has become the most studied geologic sample in history. Scientists made various discoveries by studying moon rocks, including establishing that the moon was formed around 4.5 billion years ago. Perhaps one of the most significant findings was that the data suggests the moon is actually made up of vapor and rock that congealed into a single satellite after Earth was struck by an interplanetary object thought to be around the size of Mars. The studies have been instrumental in gaining a better understanding of our solar system, the moon's origin, and the distant history of our own planet. Among the scientific instruments taken to the moon were a seismometer, which gave us our first glance at the seismic data of the moon, and a laser-ranging retroreflector. The retroreflector, delivered by Apollo 11, was the first of five eventually placed on the moon, which still allows active laser-ranging measurements to be collected. The Apollo 11 mission was a huge turning point in the field of planetary science, changing it from a purely observational study into a physically accessible analytical science. Another perhaps more obscure contribution that the moon landing had was to make our day-to-day -day lives that much easier. Working with the tool and home hardware company Black & Decker, the Apollo mission prompted the development of cordless technology. Clearly, there were no power outlets on the moon so there was a need for battery-powered tools for the landing team to drill and take samples in space, which led to the creation of the cordless vacuum cleaner and cordless power tools. So, the next time you do some DIY or vacuuming unencumbered by cords, you can thank NASA. 
But dustbusters aren't the only useful tool that was inspired by the moon landing. NASA's digital signal processing, used during the lunar landings, has since been repurposed. It is now used in a wide range of diagnostic and medical tools, including CAT scans and magnetic resonance imaging, otherwise known as an MRI. Firefighters can also thank NASA for their flame-retardant and heat-resistant clothing, as the polymers used to create the Apollo spacesuits are now used in protective clothing for firefighters, as well as military personnel, motorsports drivers, and more. If you've ever run a marathon, chances are you've been wrapped in a special lightweight heat-reflective sheet to help you keep in your body's heat after you've completed the race. Well, you can thank the Apollo 11 team for that too. On the subject of running, sports shoes have also been enhanced by the moon landing, and the shock-absorbing materials used in astronauts' moon boots can now be found in sneakers. Other everyday inventions that were originally designed for space travel included vacuum-sealed food, wireless headsets, bridge shock absorbers, and amazingly, improved baby formula. As NASA scientists were exploring the idea of using algae to create oxygen in space, they discovered certain types of algae contain omega-3 fatty acid found in breast milk. This ingredient can now be found in over 90% of baby formulas today. Another industry that got a boost from the moon landing was that of computer science. Before the lunar missions, computers were so large that they filled entire rooms. Of course, this was totally impractical if you wanted to install them onto the Eagle lunar module, so the miniaturization of technology began. Along with incredible advancements in both hardware and software, the lunar mission showed the world that computers can be dependable. On this life-or-death mission, the three men who flew to the moon were returned safely thanks to computer software and safety-critical systems. It instilled faith in the future of computers, helping society to embrace technology and leading us to the tech-filled world we live in today. The publicity and celebration of the moon missions inspired a generation of children to become scientists, engineers, and programmers. These fields, which had previously been seen as laborious, overly academic, or boring, came to life, and there was a renewed excitement for these fields. Science and technology were reframed for the modern age, and the new possibilities inflamed the imagination of a generation. Along with adjusting our perspective on the future of humanity, the moon landing had an impact on how humanity was affecting the future of the planet. Seeing our planet as a whole, a blue orb surrounded by the vacuum of space, increased awareness of the planet's fragile ecosystem. The moon landing took place in July 1969, and the following April was the first Earth Day, which highlighted a growing concern for how humans were contributing to pollution that was harming our planet. In 1970, Increasing public pressure led to Congress passing the National Environmental Protection Act, which created the Environmental Protection Agency. It is impossible to say whether these events would have still occurred if the moon landing hadn't happened, but highlighting the loneliness of our planet hurtling through space energized the environmental movement and gave people a sobering glimpse at how fragile and precarious our situation really is. One of the more bizarre impacts of the moon landing is that it sparked one of history's most prominent and enduring conspiracy theories. In the face of all evidence, conspiracy theorists still believe that the moon landings were hoaxes staged by NASA. Some think it was only the initial landing that was faked to enable America to win the space race, while others believe no human has ever set foot on the moon. Conspiracy theorists point to what they see as anomalies, including the perceived inconsistencies in the angle of the shadows, the similarity in backgrounds, questioning who took the photos and recordings, and conditions in space that some believe would have been impossible to survive. Although all of the theories have been completely debunked, the most glaring opposition to the moon landing conspiracy is that the Soviet Union never questioned the legitimacy of the mission. Surely in the midst of Cold War espionage, the arms race, and the space race, if NASA had really faked the moon landing, the Soviets would have at least attempted a smear campaign. The theory was started by a former U.S. Navy officer named Bill Casing. Casing had worked as a technical writer for one of the rocket manufacturers that aided in NASA's Apollo missions, and he claimed to have inside knowledge of the event. However, Casing never provided any proof of his theories, only claiming that NASA didn't have the technology to safely land a crew on the moon and then return them. Despite having thousands of people working on the project, Casing was the only one who claimed it was a hoax which prompted some to point out that given the cost of silencing all those people, it probably would have been cheaper just to send a crew to the moon. 
Kasing wrote a book in 1976 entitled We Never Went to the Moon, America's $30 Billion Swindle, which came out just at the right time to coincide with an increasing distrust of the government. America was rife with political and military scandals, including the Chappaquiddick incident, the secret war in Cambodia, the May Lai massacre, and the Watergate scandal. Casing's book resonated with a growing sense of mistrust in the government and became a lasting part of the 70s zeitgeist. Despite the doubt over the authenticity of the moon landing, the mission itself was an incredibly unifying moment for America and the human race as a whole. It could be argued that this was the first truly international event and it was broadcast live worldwide. The transmission was as momentous as the landing itself, and the footage was sent from the camera on the moon to the Parks Observatory and the Honeysuckle Tracking Station in New South Wales, as well as the Goldstone Tracking Station in California. In the UK, it was the first time that BBC One stayed on the air overnight for 11 continuous hours. Not to mention, the landing was shown live on TV in countries across the globe. As Neil Armstrong spoke the words, one giant leap for mankind, for one glorious moment, it seemed that all of humanity was united. How would you like to get a deeper understanding of history, impress your friends, and predict the future more accurately based on past events? If this sounds like something you might be into, then check out the brand new Captivating History Book Club by clicking the first link in the description. To learn more about the Apollo missions, check out our book, The Space Race a captivating guide to Cold War competition between the United States and the Soviet Union to reach the moon. It's available as an ebook, paperback, and audiobook. If you found the video captivating, please hit the like button and subscribe for more videos like this.